Hello, my butterflies. It is I, Dr. Kathleen Nash, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite all-time butterfly boyfriends, Dr. Robert Lustig. Dr. Robert Lustig is a pioneer when it comes to metabolic nutrition, correcting metabolism through nutrition, and he's huge in the public health sector. When I have tried to get my private clients to watch videos like this, they've always responded back that it's a little bit too technical, it's a little too long, it's a little too boring, and as a result, they don't watch it. But I think the information is so good that I'm going to try to pull out key parts of one of his latest presentations because I really think that it could help you get an understanding of why your body is gaining weight, how to reverse disease, how to get off medications, how to improve your overall health, extend your longevity, and to understand how these basic concepts are driving the weight problem independent from calories and activity. So before I even get started, I'm going to let the guy in the presentation tell you a little bit about Dr. Robert Lustig so that you know where we're coming from. This is Dr. Robert H. Lustig, MD, MSL. What is MSL? Masters in Study of Law. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, he is Emeritus Professor of Pediatrics in the Division of Endocrinology and the Institute of Health Policy Studies at the University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Lustig's career is focused on the regulation of energy balance by the central nervous system and the pathogenesis of chronic disease such as type 2 diabetes. Dr. Lustig graduated from MIT in 1976, received his MD from Cornell University Medical College in 1980, completed pediatric residency in St. Louis Children's Hospital in 1983, and clinical fellowship at UCSF in 1984. From there, he spent six years as a research associate in neuroendocrinology at the Rockefeller University. In 2013, he received his master's in studies of law from UC Hastings. He is the author of many academic works and, the pop and popular books, Fat Chance, Beating the Odds Against Sugar, Processed Food, Obesity and Disease, The Fat Chance Cookbook, and The Hacking of the American Mind the science behind the corporate takeover of our bodies and brains. Dr. Lustig is the chief medical officer of Slendine, a company developing products designed to improve metabolic health, and chief scientific officer of Eat Real, a nonprofit dedicated to reversing childhood obes obesity and diabetes by impacting the global food supply. Please welcome Dr. L Dr. Lustig. So I had him read all of his credentials to you to show you that this individual is not a lightweight in the public health sector. He has spent a majority of his life fighting obesity, particularly obesity and diabetic problems and conditions in children. He studies extensively, he's produced a lot of clinical research, and he's one of the leading authorities and experts when it comes to metabolic dysfunction, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and how our food intake reflects that. In the next clip, what I'm going to do is not, I'm not going to go through this whole lecture with you because it's an hour and a half long and I don't think you really want to sit here for an hour and a half, but there's a couple key things that he says that I want you guys to hear. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into the first clip that I'm going to show you, Dr. Lustig, who's here on the screen right now, had briefly identified what examples are of metabolic conditions or metabolic disease. Since I'm not showing you that clip, I am going to list for you the conditions that he mentioned. Just know I will also put the link to this entire presentation in my description box below, so feel free to check out the entire video. Um, but basically what he said or what he listed in terms of metabolic disease is type 2 diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, lipid problems, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and dementia. So a lot of times, one of the things that's hard for me when I talk on videos about metabolic damage, people make the misassumption that when I say, when I talk about weight loss and I talk about metabolic damage, that what I'm saying is that metabolic damage means a lowering of the basal metabolic rate. 
Basal metabolic rate is basically the rate of calories, the number of calories you burn every day completely at rest. If you were laying in bed in a coma, didn't move at all, all of the energy needed, all of the calories you would need to burn in order for your body to function throughout that 24 hour period. When I talk about metabolic damage or when I say that certain practices or methods of eating or behaviors or lifestyle choices cause metabolic damage, I'm not talking about a raising or a lowering of the calories you're burning every day. That is such a small, insignificant variable. I'm talking about this type of metabolic dis damage, disease, symptoms of, the of disease, dysfunctions in the body that impact how the body operates. That's metabolic damage. So just know, based on that information, we're gonna go into this first clip. Every single healthcare paradigm on the planet ignores two inconvenient truths. And those truths are known by this audience. They are, there is no medicalized prevention of any chronic metabolic disease. There is only treatment. And those treatments are exceedingly expensive and you're gonna be on them for 20 to 30 years and the pharma companies are delighted. In fact, they have turned their entire efforts away from acute care diseases like infectious diseases, we don't even have antibiotics or some of the things we need for now, toward chronic diseases. So here what he's basically saying is that we do nothing in our country to prevent those kinds of conditions that I just listed for you a few minutes ago. And I've said that for years as well. Medication will manage disease, but will do nothing about reducing it or reversing it or making sure that you do not get it in the first place. And that the only thing we have in place in our country is long-term treatment or management of the disease and he himself said that's very expensive and you're looking at being on it for 20 to 30 years and you're not going to see a resolution of the problem. Very specifically because this wave of chronic metabolic disease is very lucrative to them. The second inconvenient truth is you can't fix health care until you fix health and you can't fix health until you fix diet and you can't fix diet until you know what the hell is wrong. Here's the problem, it's on this slide. This was a two minute video that appeared on every football game the entire season in 2013, sponsored by Coca-Cola called Coming Together. And this is a direct, uh, you know, word for word uh, statement in that video. Beating obesity will take action by all of us based on one simple common sense fact. All calories count no matter where they come from, including Coca-Cola and everything else with calories. So, you can get your calories from carrots, you can get your calories from cheesecake, you can get your calories from Coca-Cola, you can get your calories from kumquats. Doesn't matter. Because if you eat more than you burn, you will gain weight. If you eat less than you burn, you will lose weight. Therefore, it's about energy balance. Therefore, it's about calories in and calories out. Therefore, it is about two behaviors, gluttony and sloth. Therefore, if you're fat, it's your fault. Therefore, any calorie can be part of a balanced diet. Therefore, don't pick on our calories, go pick on somebody else's calories. Okay, all of that comes from this notion that calories are fungible. That one calorie is just like another. And after all, it's common sense. Well, I don't believe in common sense. I believe in science. I believe in data. Presumably you do too. At UCSF, we have a motto, in God we trust, everybody else has to produce the data. But who's saying it? Well, these are the people saying it, right? And you know all of them. And they control 90% of the food supply. And it works for them, and you'll see why as we go. So they say it's about calories. They say it's about obesity, is it? There are countries that are obese without being diabetic, such as Iceland, Mongolia, Micronesia, and there are countries that are diabetic without being obese, such as India, Pakistan, and China. India and China today have an 11% diabetes prevalence, and they're not fat. We are the fattest nation on earth, and we have a 9.4% diabetes prevalence. If diabetes is about obesity, how come they have more diabetes than we do? And I agree. So one of the things that I often say to my private clients is that I'm trying to change your thinking and I'm trying to change your paradigm because what we are taught in our country is that fat comes first and because you get fat, you get sick, right? So fat comes first, from fat comes disease. 
I'm trying to tell you, and Dr. Lustig is here trying to tell you and show you and backing it up with clinical research, that it's the opposite, that the disease comes first and may or may not carry the obesity symptom. Some people get it and some people don't. If you know any skinny person who's had a heart attack, then you know that it can't always be that fat comes first because these people don't have obesity and yet they are metabolically sick. And that is a fundamental principle that we all need to understand, one, to get ourselves healthy, but for the obese or the overweight individual that doesn't want to be obese or overweight, to get you and to help you fix your problem. Problem number one. Problem number two. Obesity is increasing worldwide at the rate of 2.78% per year amortized over the past 40 years. Yet diabetes is increasing worldwide at the rate of 4.07%. Right, so how can diabetes increase at a faster rate than obesity if obesity causes diabetes? You get me? And you get him, he's probably gonna say the same thing. Per year, for those same 40 years amortized over those 40 years. If diabetes is a subset of the larger subgroup of obese individuals, how come the diabetes rate's going up faster than the obesity rate? And there it is. I've said this in this room before, but for those who weren't there, I will say it again. This is the most important thing I will tell you. And if you don't get this, nothing else matters. This is a Venn diagram of the entire United States adult population, 240 million. Now, 30% are obese, BMI over 30. 70% normal weight, BMI under 30. Mutually exclusive circles, Everyone in this room is in one of the two circles, and you know who you are. The standard mantra from the doctors and the dietitians and the Institute of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health and the Surgeon General and the White House and Congress and the food industry is the following. 80% of those obese people, 80% of 30%, those 57 million people, they're sick. They're metabolically ill. They're fat and they're sick and they're sick because they're fat. And if they would only just diet and exercise, we could solve this problem. That's what they say. And the fitness industry says it too. And the diet industry says it too. I see fitness influencers. I see diet influencers all over social media spewing this same thing, that it's your fault, a calorie's a calorie. If you would just eat less and move more, your problems would be solved and we wouldn't have to hear you bitch about your weight problems. So one of the reasons that I'm reacting to this is Yes, we see it in the medical community, and you may, may or may not be aware of it, but we see it a lot in the fitness and the diet industry, too. Garbage. Complete trash. Oh, what did he say? Wait. Garbage. Oh. Complete trash. Not true. Common sense. Sounds right. Why is it trash? It's on the slide. Anybody? Well, it is true that 80% of 30% are metabolically ill. I don't argue that. That is true. But that means that 20% of 30% are not. We have a name for them. MHO, metabolically healthy obese. We actually study them to try to figure out how come they didn't get sick. And it's that 20% that the fat acceptance movement holds onto when they try to tell you that you can't judge their health by looking at them. The only downside, I, I shouldn't say that. I see a lot of downsides with fat acceptance, but one of the downsides that I see is that you're clinging to the hope that you're the one in five. It's, it's, it's almost as if the 20% of the you can't judge me health at every size just because I'm fat doesn't mean I'm sick crowd all got together and collectively decided to go on YouTube and make videos about the fact that just because you're fat doesn't mean that you're sick. So you have a one in five shot that if you're fat, you're not metabolically sick, but the odds are against you. And it's not the main point he's about to make, but I did want to stop the video and touch on that. They will live a completely normal life, die at a completely normal age. Their telomeres are exactly the same size as all of their uh, 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 people the same age as them, okay? not costing the taxpayer a dime. They're just fat. Conversely, and this is the important part, 40% of the normal weight 
population have the exact same diseases as do the obese. They're just not obese. So if all I got to do is eat less and move more to get to my ideal weight, then how come a bigger population of the United States is normal weight but metabolically sick? 80% of 30%, the 80% of the obese people who are sick total 57 million. But the 40% of the 70% that are normal weight or slightly overweight, that's 67 million. So 67 million skinny people are fat, or sorry, so 67 million skinny people are metabolically sick. They have high, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, fatty liver, they have heart disease, they have Alzheimer's, and 57% of the obese individuals are sick. If it's just you need to eat less and move more and that's going to fix all your problems, then why are 67 million people still metabolically sick? A calorie is not just a calorie. Normal weight people get type 2 diabetes, hypertension, lipid problems, cardiovascular disease, cancer, dementia, too. Now, they get it at a lower prevalence, 40% instead of 80%. So, obesity is a risk factor. I don't argue that. Right, and That's neither true. do I. Obesity is a risk factor. It is a risk factor. But it's more also a symptom. It's a symptom, it's a risk factor, but it is not causative. Therefore, going after obesity with just eating less and moving more is not going to fix the problem. But it's not a cause. Risk factor doesn't mean cause. Okay? It can certainly exacerbate risk, yes. but it's not the cause. Because normal weight people get it too. And when you do the math, it turns out there are 67 million thin sick people complaining about the 57 million fat sick people. There are more thin sick people than there are fat sick people. And when you do the math on the two of them together, it's more than half the U.S. population, which makes this a public health crisis. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video there mainly because it is getting into like 17 minutes and I know it's kind of hard to sit for that long and he actually still has more great points on the way. So I'm probably gonna have to make this um, like a series or continuing it in further videos. But the main takeaway point that I want you guys to understand here is that when people tell you that all you have to do is eat less and move more and when you see that your body doesn't respond well to that, meaning that the amount of effort that you're putting in doesn't equal the amount of result that you believe you should get, that chances are there is metabolic damage going on inside the body that is stopping it from behaving appropriately and giving you the results that you want. And if you would like to get more information or find out exactly what the metabolic damage is and how you can fix it, potentially losing three to seven pounds a week and keeping it off eating up to 3,000 calories a day, please check me out at drnash.com. My link will be in the, the description box below as well as the link to this original video with Dr. Robert Lustig. I look forward to showing you more from this video. If you have any questions about what he's saying and about what I'm saying, make sure you leave a comment. Also make sure that you are subscribing and clicking the notification bell so that you butterflies find out whenever I release to you a new video. Have a great week. I look forward to sharing more information with you and bye-bye. Bye-bye butterflies.